this week on Rocks and a Hard Place. I think they're scared. They're scared to tell anyone anything. Just in case. Support weapons flight head south to patrol a town for the very first time. There's nothing different. It's like being in Murph Tidville, isn't it? It's a hot, humid and windy day in southeastern Iraq. Two squadrons support weapons flight, along with Sea Flight's bulldogs, are on their way to patrol a new area of interest. Located to the south of the Cobb, the town of Azabaya stands on the original site of Basra city. Still considered potentially hostile, the flight are entering the area for the very first time in order to gauge the atmosphere and examine suspected rocket launch sites. Yeah, we're uh, right down in the southeast of the area. This is where a lot of rockets have been fired from this area. That's why we've come down, um, have a look around the village and just uh, get a general feel of the area, how they are down here. Like. Leaving the Bulldogs in a formation known as the Zulu Muster, the flight head towards their objective several kilometres away. Because this is the most southern village we've been to, look like they got more money in a way, you know what I mean? As in the buildings are like proper, like stone. Whereas the north, as we know, is just like, like the, it's just mud huts, hay, and things like that. There's a lot more roads, um, a lot more trucks outside the houses. So there must be a better kind of industry down here. I'm um, just, just telling the sergeant about, about the mortar. Um, it's old. As you can see, the, the top of it is missing. Uh, we're just going to mark the grid and, uh, and then crack on. With the old mortar shell marked, the flight press on. Um, we're still making our way down to uh, Azerbaijan. We just want to handrail it down to uh, keep going south. And then we just cut in. And then we start doing our J2 as we come back up. Normally, we do it ourselves. Uh, the NCOs and the sergeant, we go in, we talk with the interpreter uh, and try and get, um, just kind of uh, know the local people a bit, um, find out if they know anything about um, any rockets being fired or anything like that, who the head guy is of the village, um, what tribes are in the village and stuff like that. But luckily today we've got a, we've got like um, a J2 cell with us that will just uh, do all the talking. Yeah, the in-teams are just going in now, just talking to the locals. They'll tell you nothing's wrong, but when they know that something is wrong. From hearing stories of, like, kidnappings, murders, beheadings and things in Basra City, I think they're scared. They're scared to tell anyone anything, just in case it gets back. Or if they, say, for instance, now, if there was militia, saw them talking to us lot, then they'll be round there when it goes dark, when they know that we've left. Bullying them questions. They'll just kill them if they're not interested. Straight away. Asalaamu As Alaikum. We try and talk to the kids as much as we can, because the young kids, they won't, wouldn't have gone to like anti-coalition extremist mosques. If the kids are nice or younger, and then mid-teens, they hate us, then we know there's obviously something wrong. That's like my school bus, I went to school in the myth of that. I'd like to think they're happy to see us. Surely they must realise that things have got to get better, I believe. I don't think they can get any worse than when they were under rain of Saddam Hussein. But then again, I don't think they see it that way. They probably had jobs then and things like that, even though they were treated sh As you can see, the, the rubbish around the place are horrific, innit? And they just live and sleep and just play in this all day. The J-2 intelligence gathering task achieved, the flights start to move back to the Zulu muster via some known rocket launch sites. This area now we come into, as you can see with all the booms, where they can just lay rockets on and just fire them towards camp. Just looking for scorch marks and stuff now. Um, rails, um, like just big metal things that rockets can like sit on and like the, face the general direction of the camp. Um, any like wires, batteries, mobile phones, anything that can trigger them off. They do well, don't they, to hit this with rockets from here? Like they just aim 
obviously look at a map because they all got maps. And they just lay it up and go, yeah, but looks about right. And then just, whoomph, fire. You realise why they can do so many rockets with all the little berms? You can hide them so well, isn't it? Yeah. You don't look threatening, there's nothing different. It's like being in Murphy Tidville, isn't it? As the light fades, support weapons flight head back to the Bulldogs. That's just done now. Uh, collected as much J2 information that we needed. Uh, checked out the poo site. Hoping we're going back to Zulu Muster now. Uh, before it actually goes pitch black. Uh, we've changed our night sights ready uh, for observation on the way back and go back for some late scoff. Woohoo! Next time on Rocks in a Hard Place. Happy birthday, big boy. Coxie marks a special day and I see inside the Cobb's command post. I've got my uh, combat desk fully loaded with pens and pencils. Great.